Not sure if they're live yet. We're, <laughs> we're just seeing. Oh, we are. We are here. We're Hello. Live. Hello. You're seeing us from a different angle yes. today. We thought you might, it might be better for what we're doing today. Absolutely. So you can see the computer, so I can see your comments. We need to be able to uh, see what we're doing. Yeah. Because the camera is, be, is behind us today. Yes. I hope we've got a bit of a lag time lag oh, as well. Okay. Yeah. Oh. So, it's all new so, to us, this, yes, isn't it? <laughs> it is. So say hi if you... Yes. Yes, there's a few seconds delay. Yeah. Let us know if you're there. So say, say hi, hi if you can see us. How excited are you? I know. <laughs> there's 12 people watching so far. Oh, hi. Thank apparently. you for joining us. So... Thank you. Yes. Look up. Yeah. Everybody commenting. Alison Brown. Hi, Alison. Hi, yes, Alison. we can see that. Thank you for joining us. Oh, hi, Elaine. Hi, Elaine. <laughs> well, it's exciting. Yeah, it? it's just there's a bit of a... We've got a bit yeah. of a time lag, so... We can see your comment. You might get a bit of a... Well, we get a bit it's of a, a delay. delay. Yeah. So. Oh, Jane's there. Hi, Jane. Thank you for joining us. Okay. Shall we wait for a few more? Right, we'll just hang on for a few more. Jane. So. Oh, we've got quite a few. Yeah. Hi, so. Janet. Stitching time. Stitching hi. time. Janet. Hi. Right. I'm trying not to look at the picture yeah. because there's a time lag. Yeah. There's a time <laughs> lag. I might move it slightly, actually. Yeah. Um, because there's a time lag, we're looking here. Yes. And it looks like that we're about 10 seconds behind what yeah. we're actually doing. So it's a bit, um, it's a bit, a bit confusing. <laughs> but, yeah, that's the so word I'm just going to move the computer out of the way. Yeah. Um, so we know we're in the shot. Yeah. And that you can see us. I'll move over it, move the camera over if you need to see what Chloe's yeah, doing a little bit better. Yeah. Right, so let's just move a few tools out of the way. So, what are we doing today, Chloe? So, exciting. So, today we're going to be learning how to make binding. So, we're going to be binding a place mat, and you can apply this to a quilt, or if you're just doing any binding, on, not on the bias, yes. basically. Uh, but we will be learning how to do uh, binding on the bias as well. Yes, we're going to show you how to do continuous binding from a fat quarter. Yes. From a fat quarter, yeah. yes. So that's exciting. So to start, you're going to need um, to make a placemat or you might have a quilt or whatever, but we're using a placemat. Yeah, so anyway. hopefully you've already got yes. that ready. Yes. Um, uh, this is a 16 inch by 14 inch. Um, you can make it bigger or smaller. It's up to you, but that's what we're doing today. You're going to need a 10 inch piece of fabric. So here's mine. And we're going to be cutting strips um, of two and a half inch by the width of the fabric, which is 44 inches to make our binding. Right. So how can we prep this placemat? So if, if we you, haven't already. Yes, if you haven't already done your placemat, I had a backing fabric, I had my top fabric and I put some, um, what's the... Uh, polytherm, Bosal yeah. polytherm, the heat, the heat reflective Yeah, in the wadding. middle. So today I've just sewn round the edge a quarter of an inch, um, but you can quilt this. I would probably suggest, yeah, quilting yeah. it first. So don't sew around your edge, quilt it, or you can use um, the 505. Yeah, if you don't want to quilt spray. it, um, yeah. you can use the 505. Which is fabulous. Spray, yeah. yeah. And it's just, just a temporary, it. when you wash it, the glue disappears. Yeah. And then you can either just stitch around the edge or quilt it. Yeah. Um, but like I say, I've just done a quarter inch stitch around the edge on mine today. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is cut the binding. Yes. So this will stay on YouTube. Yes. So if you're just watching, I think Elaine says she's just watching uh, to get some hints and tips for future projects. Yeah. Um, so if you're just watching and you're going to try it later or yeah. use it later, it will stay, this will stay on YouTube. Yes, it should be, yeah, good this for so, you for the tips and stuff because corners can be a bit tricky, can't they? On they can. Hand. So what am I doing with this? So we're going to be cutting two and a half inch strips. So to work out how many strips you're going to need, so say you've done yours, your mat bigger or smaller, you need to add up all your sides. So ours um, measures 60 inches all the way around. We're going to add on two and a half inches, which is the width of our binding. Yeah, you add on the width of your binding. Yeah, and then a couple of inches. Yeah, a couple of inches. A couple of inches extra, 
um, just to make sure we've got enough. Yeah. So that is how you work out how many strips you're going to need for the binding. Yeah, when you're, when you're buying your fabric yes. to cut your binding. Yeah. So if that's your quilt, measure your, all four sides. Yeah. Yeah. That's add it. them up. Add them up. And then... And then add on your width of your binding, if you're doing it bigger or smaller, um, and then add on a couple of inches. So yep, definitely. Work that one out. So let's right. get started then. So I'm just got to stand up to yeah, do this. To you cut. don't want to rotary cut sitting down. No. Because this is where it goes wrong. So this is a rotary cutter I use at the moment, the uh, deluxe one. Yeah. It's got a locking button, so you can lock it so it doesn't open, um, but it drops back yeah. when you let go if when the button's pressed the other way. So we're doing two and two and a half inch. Two and a half inch. Yeah. So I've got my long ruler. And I'm lining up. If, if you don't know how to do this already, in fact, I need a straight edge. Yes, always make sure you've got your straight, straight edge, edge first. first. Yeah. So I always side. cut that first. So I'm going to line up the fold along the bottom of the mat so that we know that's straight. And then if I line up the ruler, if I line up my ruler along the bottom there as well. I know everything's straight because I'm straight here. So just trim that. Turn that off. Now you can either line it up with your ruler or you can just count across on your on your mat. So if that's lined up on my mat, I can just count two and a half inches that way and put my ruler there. Or you can then flip it round. This is tends to be how I do it. Oh yeah, you flip it. I want two strips yeah. that are two and a half inches wide. Yeah. Well two two and a half is five, so I'll yeah. put a five inch oh. strip. I know people like to know how we do this. Yeah. So I'll line up five there. And then I just cut one piece. And then I come back to two and a half and you've got your two nice. pieces. Alright, so lined up there That's with the two, with the two and a half. Make sure everything's straight. Yeah. When you're using a long ruler like this, or even if you're using the, the shorter one, make sure you stood up above it. Yeah. And you need to put apply some pressure on your mat. If you're using a shorter ruler, you could go so far. Move your ruler up. Yeah. Make sure you keep that ruler straight. But when you're on a long one like this, you need to walk your hand up. Yes, keep it in place. The sharper your blade, the newer your blade, the easier that'll be. You're less likely to push your ruler as you go in. Yeah. So there we go. So lock that, that down. Now I don't know if you do this, but I um I tend to. Oh, cut sorry. That. Trim that off. <laughs> sorry. I yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> Don't forget, yeah, cut your selvage. Cut your selvage off. You don't want the holes. Just a nice, quick, easy job. That Straighten one. that up. That's right, isn't it? That's yeah, straight. That's, that's it. There you go. Thank you very much. So we've got our two strips now. So now we need to join these together. So I'm going to take one end and one end of the other one. And this time, we're not going to put place on. You can do it on the right, table because we oh, can thank see. You. Yeah. Do it there. I'm, I don't know where the camera is. Do it on the table. table. So, if you have a look there, you can go. see what they can, yeah. where you can go. You can see. So we're going to go like this. We're going to do it at an angle. So I've just placed them. But if you've got pattern fabric, just right sides together at an angle like that. And then I like to, with a ruler and a pen, or you don't have to, you can just go for it draw a line a diagonal line from corner to corner so you would use your chalk pen or something like yes. that i've got the world's giantest ruler <laughs> and then you've got to hand can i put a pin of course you can there so it doesn't pin slip. it or clip it yeah just so it doesn't slip like that put that on there for you there we go okay. got my giant ruler could do with a small <laughs> ruler for doing this like I say, you can just go for it if you if you're quite confident. And That's then, as near as damn it, I think. Yeah. I would if I had my little ruler, you'd use your forty five degree line. Yes, you would. On your ruler, but I'm uh, currently using giant <laughs> ruler. So then, what we're going to do is take that to our sewing machine, and we're going to sew down this line. Okay. Any questions? Feel free to ask questions. So Sam says she's just trying to finish the embroidery on her mat so you can show me oh, how to bind yes. it. Yes, oh brilliant. Hang on, stop. Let me just oh, turn oh, this camera a bit. Just... 
Let me just adjust us a bit. I can't see if that's... Then look at the camera. <laughs> behind. We're they not are. used to being behind us. Yeah. <laughs> right, can you see? Yeah. You should be able to see now. Okay, so I've just put my foot and put my needle so that it's on that line. And I'm just going to sew along that line. Back tack. And starting at the end. and then it should open out like that and what we're going to do is we're going to cut off this corner leave about a quarter of an inch uh, what? Elaine sorry. says what stitch are you using? Um, I'm on a stitch length of two I think this is no, that's top, the top, top? That, the top one. It might be that on a bit one. long, that actually. Yeah, I thought. Yeah. Like a bit. Which is it? That one. I'm not used to this. That's your stitch one. That one. That's that your one. speed. <laughs> the bottom, yeah. That one. That's your speed. Yeah, that that's your stitch length, 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 I think. So if I, got I up, think. Is it? Smaller. Because you, you've got quite a long stitch length quite there. That looks, about, that looks about a four mil. You would yeah. use your regular stitch length, yeah. probably about two and a half mil. Yeah. Between, yeah. Anywhere between. Yeah, I'd say between two and a half and three. Yeah. So. So, so that's quite bold. So you can see, you can see better anyway. Yes. Because you're just using a, um, a pastel thread on there, you can see it clearer. Yeah. So okay. what we're going to do now, yeah, is cut at a quarter of an inch behind that line. So we're behind that line. That triangle. I really like this method of doing it. I think it looks really neat, and I just really love it. There we go. Can I have a little uh, quarter hook for the bits? Can I so then when you open it out, you should have your binding now looking like this. And we're going to give that a press with the iron. I just need to move the camera back. Oh, oh sorry. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, can't see. Sorry. It's because we've got this time yeah. lag. Oh, you can see my head. <laughs> I know, we have to wait 10 seconds before we can see. I'm sorry if you can see my head in full view. <laughs> there you go. There. there we are. Okay, show that right. again. Yeah, so we've cut off this corner so we've left a quarter about a quarter of an inch seam allowance there so when you open it up it's going to look like this you're going to have this nice diagonal sort of stitch yeah we can see yeah, that all right. okay. yeah we can see so that. we're going to take that to our ironing board and we're going to press that and i i don't know about you heather but i tend to press my seams open i press them open as well yeah, yeah. so press your seam open on that right one. so i've just got an ironing mat here you could use for this if you've got one of these i don't want to use it because it's brand new but you could use one of these little mini ironing boards as we're only doing a little bit of ironing so if you've got one of these this is where they come in handy Oh, yeah. I've recently invested in my little prim iron. It's brilliant. No, we've all been I, don't, them. I don't know why I didn't buy one before. Well, I do know why I didn't buy one before, but because I was, I had a big iron and I've got a non-steam mini iron, but then I wanted to get my electricity consumption down because yes. my iron's on all don't the time. How much they and they eat electric. Yeah. So your average household iron uses 2,400 kilowatts yeah. an hour, wow. which when you work that out, look at your kilowatts an hour, it's quite a lot. Because These use, I think, 400 kilowatts wow. an hour so it's a big difference if you're worried about your fuel bills Absolutely. so a little iron like this perfect at the moment there we go is that good so enough there we go. that's good enough so you've got a nice flat seam there right so our next step you might need your iron actually still right don't sorry put your iron away don't put my iron away uh, we're going to be folding it in half like so so you're going to all the way along give it a press all the way along the width of the the strips yeah fantastic the lines aren't they yeah and they do you can put obviously water in them steam i'm yes. not in it at the moment because steam will steam up the camera <laughs> we don't want to do that on the oh, line no. yeah and then you're also going to need next some pins and clip or clips pins or clips no, whichever you prefer can you carry on ironing I'll carry now on. and i'll see yeah. if it's, i'll just see if there's any questions if an answer uh, Jane says she uses a felt mat all the time, so I can just check, chuck it aside when I don't need it, and then spend several minutes trying to find it again. Yes. I know I use mine quite a lot. I do often put it on top of, I've got a regular, you'll see in my videos a lot, I've got a regular ironing Ooh. mat, which has got, they have a board back. Yeah, sorry. The only problem with a, a felt mat when you're steaming it is your mat gets wet underneath because the, ah. the steam goes through. Yeah. yeah, I need a felt mat. But they are really good. 
I did buy a mat with them. Um, it had a cutting board on one side. <laughs> Elaine says, thanks for the info. She'll swap to hers. That's probably the iron. If yes. you are worried about your power bills and you have your iron on all the time, they, you know, it's yeah, it, it, it's a big thing at the moment with the price it, of electric. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I have mine on all the time when I'm sewing and that can be up to like three or four hours. So the um, I only put my big iron on now when I'm uh, got to iron a big piece of fabric. Yes. When all the regular, all the other stuff that I'm doing. Yeah. I'm... Um, I'm using this. I'm one. using this now. And get your little iron board to match. <laughs> so I'm nearly there now. Elaine says the iron is the best tool and the board. It is. Yes. Like I say, it's brilliant. I've only had this is mine. I've only had yeah. it a few days. There we go. So this will be in uh, all my videos from now on. Yeah. Oh, and they've got a really long they cord. Are long, no, they have they a really long cord really as well. Nice. Yeah. So now we. Iron that in half. So keep your eye in there. We're going to open it out again. Hang on, let me just check this camera angle. Yeah. Yeah. Can you yeah. See? <laughs> yeah. We're going to open it out. Now you can either do this one at a time or together. I do it together just because I do a lot of buying, so it's a yeah. bit easier. We're going to fold one side into that fold, and then we're going to fold the other side into that fold. So we're making like that, basically our binding. Yeah. yeah. Okay, do you okay. want me to do that or do you, do you want to do that? Uh, whichever, I don't mind. <laughs> and just again, go along the whole way. Like I say, you can do one side at once or both together, depending on how confident you are. If you're very confident, you could use a binding tool. Um, I'm not very good with these. I've never used a binding tool. Uh, I have used it. Yeah. Um, but I can't say I'm the best with it, but I know there's plenty of people are. Mm. Um, so that's an option that's, yeah. for, for doing this stage. You push your binding in through the bottom. Yeah. Use a pin or something to pull it through. It's better if you cut it to a point at the end because yes. you can get it in. And then you can pull that in. And as it pulls along, it folds it for you. You just have to make sure you keep it lined up. And, and it presses this fold for you. It can make it a little bit quicker. Yeah. Some people love them. Yes. Some, some people don't. don't. I know, I don't know. I just like to make my own this year. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's just how what I've been used to. This is what I'm used to doing as well. Mm. I find it. I do find it quicker to do one side than do, do the then, other. Yeah. yeah. See, I'm used to using my bigger irons, so I do two at once because it's just because it's bigger. Thanks, Heather. That's all right. <laughs> now you see when you get to this bias join, if you just if you just um, if you just sewn them together in a straight line, you get quite a bulky seam. You do. Whereas when you've done it on the uh, on the bias like that at an angle, it goes, it flattens it, it, flattens it out because the, yeah. the bulk of the seam is spread out. It's a much nicer way, I think. Nearly there. there. Nearly <laughs> there for this side. I just found this a lot quicker this, this way. Yeah, definitely. But again, it's just, yeah. How you like to do it, it does. Isn't it? I guess. I do like making my own binding. So are we all keeping up? Are yes. We, is there anybody that's actually doing this along with us? Let us know. Or just watching? Yes, just yeah, getting some tips. Tell us what you're up to. What you're making. Got any anything? Elaine says she can't get on with a binding tool. Oh really? I assume that's what she means. Yeah. yeah, but I find it very once you get it. Yeah. I can That's use the one-inch yeah. one. I find the, the smaller one's a bit fiddly. Yeah. Um, but once you once you once you understand how they work, yeah. Hang on, no, no, no. yeah. It's just I'm fighting against the cord because <laughs> we're the F cords at the wrong angle, really. Mm. I have mine on me plugged in on my table. I have an extension yeah. lead sitting on my table, so it's not pulling off the edge of the table. Can you see the comment? Uh, Lane says they are very fiddly. Mm. Can't. Yeah, get on with them. I need glasses from here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nearly there. I need to give one a try. This is the bit that you cut out in the in the in the filmed tutorials. <laughs> yes. So show sure you how to do it and then you, you miss out you miss all this bit. <laughs> so you obviously you can buy pre made. You can buy pre made. But you're very limited to the sizes and the colours. Colours. That's why I like making my own because you can pick your own colours then. This way. To go with. And it doesn't take that long really. No, it doesn't really. Once you've made it a few times and you've got the hang of it, it's um you get quicker. And it, it's yeah. I much prefer it. Nearly there. Nearly, Nearly there. there. 
Just one more bit of ironing. <laughs> so now that we've done that, once again, we're just going to fold it in half. Like now, so. I find on this, doing this stage, you mm. don't actually need... Oh, because you're going not. to pull it, you know, yeah. when you pull it round, yeah. you don't actually need to. Ah, I don't think you need to press it at this not stage. Press it, see. Do you want to try press that? It. We'll go with that. Because you yeah. might need to pull it a little bit further over than half. Right. So okay. you don't need to press at that see, stage. See, different methods. Okay, so what we're going Save to a bit do of time. is. Do you want to move the Sorry, move your mat out of the way yeah. now. So what we're going to do is. Can I take this off for open, a minute? Yeah, of course you can. Take our mat. And we're going to open one side of our fold and we're going to line that up with the top of your mat. Now we're going to leave a bit of fabric spare, quite a, I'd say three inches, yeah. three inches spare, because when we come back round, we're going to be joining our pieces together so you don't want it all sewn down. And you're having a big gap in the middle, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is just line the top of my binding up with the top of my mat and again you can either pin or you can um, clip it down. I'm going to use clips. <laughs> Your says, can you give us a lesson on it, on how to use one of those Yeah, uh, that's binds. something yeah, we could do. I'll practice yeah. that and yeah, we'll do Definitely. that. Yeah. Um, watching for tips, embroidering at the moment, says Josie. Oh, Janice, nice. on some of my quilts I've just used the fold over method with the bottom fabric. Yes, it's in that way you make your yes. fabric bigger. Right, yeah. Your background fabric bigger, and then you wrap it round to the front. Oh. So you don't need to, the yes, extra stage. The extra yeah, extra stage, yeah. Like I said, different methods, yeah. And says, have to watch on catch up. Thanks for this. Yes. I know everybody, a lot of people struggle with binding. Yeah, it, I think it's the corners and that. Yeah. It's, it's difficult. So And the joining it at the and end. And the joining, yeah. yeah, that's difficult. So we've come to a corner now, so I've just clipped, left a bit spare. So what we're going to do because I know a lot of people do struggle with this and I'll try and explain it as yeah. best as I can. So we're, we're going to have it flat as if we, as we are doing with it running along the top. And what we're going to do is I put my finger where the corner is and we're going to flip the binding over so that we are making sort of a diagonal line from the corner with it. So we're making a fold. So I'll show you that again. So we've got it flat. Let's see if I can zoom in so, a bit. Yeah. I'm just going to tilt the camera. <laughs> Let me just look from behind. There we go. Is it Go all on. Right? Yeah. yeah. So again, so we've got it flat, and I'm just going to put my finger there, and we're just going to flip our binding over to make a fold, so a diagonal fold. And this line here will be parallel with the yes, edge. Yes, it will. So then we're going to just make a crease in that. And then you're going to flip your binding back over on itself. You might have to wiggle it a little bit so that this fold here is parallel with the top of that and we're going back down the edge of the binding. So I'll show you that bit again. So we're just here with our fold. We're going to crease it and flip it back over and give it a bit of a wiggle so that we're going back down the edge of the placemat. So you should have sort of like a, a fold there now. Hi, Gail. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then we're going to pin or clip that down. Sam says, is that the front or the back? Do you mean of the binding or the, the, the mat? This is the mat. Yes, this is yeah. that. So we're doing the front of That's the That's a good mat. point. Are we <laughs> sewing it on the back and bringing it round That's to the it. front? Sorry, everybody. Yeah. Yes, sorry. I am naturally going to the front and going to the back. No. If you were it. going to hand stitch it, yes. you put. Thanks for that, Sam. Thank you for that. Right. Yes. If you were going to hand stitch it, you would sew it on the front and bring it round to the back yes. and hand stitch it on the back. If you're sewing I went it, into autopilot. Yeah. <laughs> if you're sewing it by machine, which we're doing here yeah. today, you sew it. On the back, you put it on the back yes. and then sew it onto the front. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, I like to say I'm used to just going from the front to the back because you hand sew yours I hand a lot. Sew mine a lot. Yeah. yeah, so here we go. So I'll just line that up again. There we go. Pin or clip that, and then we're going back down the mat. And just keep 
pinning and clipping going round your corners. Getting round. Right, I'll, I'll, I'll keep it zoomed in for one more corner yeah. and then I'll stand it back up yeah. again. So we're here at a corner again. So we're making our diagonal line. So this is parallel. Make sure this yeah. is straight here, parallel to this edge here. There you go. And then we're flipping it back over on itself. And then we're going back down again. Okay, let me just there stand the. So I'll just finish that off. I'll just stand the camera back up. Yeah. Just make sure we're in the right spot. Um, yeah. Ooh. Gail says, I have my 16 by 10 mat. How long should I do the binding? So if you miss the start, we do take the start, but um, you do, you add up each side of your mat. So ours equals up to 60 inches. Uh, add on the width of your binding, which is two and a half inches, and then add on a few inches. And, yeah, add, add on two or three inches so, just for, just to be on the safe side. Yes. So um, this we did our, we did two strips, didn't we? We did. Of the width of the fabric, which yeah. was 44. And that's plenty enough. Yeah, we've got more than enough. Yes. I always like to have a little bit extra. When you're working out for a quilt, just the two, just measure all four sides. Or yeah. measure the two long sides, add them up. Measure the two short sides, add them up. Add it all together. Add the width of the, the binding, which is our two and a half inch. And then add on just a couple of inches just to... Uh, just, just sure. in case you go a little bit wrong or to allow for the taking at the corners and things like that. Yes. Uh, rather have a bit too more. much than not enough. Yes, definitely. Yeah, corners take a bit more than you think. Okay, so I'm at the beginning again. Can I borrow a pin? Oh, I've got one. Have you got one over there? Where's the pin? Push and go. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Is it dropped off? Right. So, we're back at the start again. So I've got this long tail here and I'm just going to cut a bit off, a bit longer than what we left at the start. Yeah, Gales would be 16, two, sorry, two 16s is 32 and two 10s is 20, so 52. Add the width of your binding plus a couple of inches. Yes. Okay, so here we go. I've got my two pieces at the end and what we're going to do is laying on top of each other. Let me come back down. Sorry, yeah. I'm going to come back down and show <laughs> that. And I'm wondering, we're going to need a pin cushion later. Where's it gone? <laughs> I've uh, lost a bit of it. Um... Our pin cushion's disappeared. That's strange. Isn't yeah. It? Right. So, can I borrow a, that ruler? That big one, please. Let me just see if I've got my smaller ruler in my bag. Sorry if it looks like there's no. Here. <laughs> oh, brilliant. I have got a smaller one. There we go. Okay, so I've got my end there and I've got my start here okay and what we're going to do is just measure I might put that down a little bit there though actually put that down a little bit more mm -hmm. line them up from this end one here so what I like to do is just pull it out a little bit keeping it flat from there we're going to measure two and a half inches that is the width of our binding so we're going to be drawing it on this top piece of fabric here there we go so i've drawn my mark from that starting point to here and we're just going to cut that off where our mark is do we have a longer ruler in stock i think there is I think there is one. I've actually. seen one downstairs. Yeah. I think there is one in stock, yeah. So there we go. So we're ready for when we um, have sewn to the back to join it together. So the first thing we're going to do, and I like to start sort of where my first pin is or my first clip is, we're going to start sewing in this uh, ditch that we made with our iron. Okay. So I'll just pop this back down and then just tilt. Just try and make sure I don't get your head. Yeah. <laughs> Not filming the back no. of your head. <laughs> okay, right. can you see all right? I think so. Yeah. Just give it a sec. There we go. That's yeah. what you can see now. Are all right? 
So yeah, so I've just got my needle going into that line that we made. So I'm just going to, should I move this stitch up, do you think? Is it up or down? It's, it's, it's longer, you want to go down, I down, think. that way. It's your old machine. I know, this is my old one, I can't believe I just used it. Well, you'll find out when you start. Yes. So I like to... I think it's the top one, to be fair, but... Is it? The top one. That one? Yeah, go down. Down. Yeah. One. Two. Two. I was on two. Yeah. Oh, right. Well, <laughs> go, you'll find <laughs> out when you start. So I like to backstitch at the start of mine. So I'm just going to backstitch. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Twenty-ten. Twenty-eleven. Twenty-twelve. Twenty-thirteen. Twenty-fourteen. Twenty-fifteen. Twenty-sixteen. Twenty-seventeen. Twenty-eighteen. Twenty-nineteen. Twenty-twenty. 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 Tw
exciting. Oh, do you know, they make... You wonder how you ever fabulous. managed without it. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, it's it's quite usable with the 6-inch one, the 12-inch yeah. one, but once you get a 24-inch one... Right. So I've just sewn a little bit past my corner and I've backstitched so that I've still got a piece spare here and a piece spare there so that we're ready to, to close that up. So what we're going to do, I don't know if we want to... Do you want me to go back to the... the... Yeah, back on the mat. Yeah, just pop, pop it down. Are we all right? I think so. Just push forward a bit. Push forward. About there, yeah. yeah. Okay. So this bit can be a little bit tricky if you're new to this. And we've definitely yeah. had our times with Might be better if he's down. If turn it, turn this, it way. this way. Then yeah. it's in front of you. That's yeah, so, it. so go I about there. Yeah. yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to be drawing our two pieces and we're going to sort of pull, pull them together a little bit so that we don't have a bit of a bag, sort of, yeah. you know, when we come round to it, sewing it. And we're going to place them flat, open, right side up on one piece and right side facing down so you've got your right That's side it. facing together it can be a bit fiddly now always check this yes, before first. have you got that pin i've got yes I've got pin. <laughs> i don't know where the pin cushion's gone is it on the chair oh sorry it's disappeared. <laughs> Find the pins. If you pin that, because then you can, if you pin it here, yes. you can open it out and check, check it. You've got, you've got it the right way around. So I'll just show you that again. So we're here like this, and we're going to just lay that piece flat. Right side up. Right side up. This piece right side facing down. So you've got your right sides together. So if we pin this edge. Pin that edge, yeah. Because you might find if you do this the wrong way the first couple of times, like I we did, know all and you that. did. Um, put a couple of pins there, then you can open it out and check, check it. Check that it's going the right In way. the right direction, or so, if you've got it tight enough. Yes, so what we're going to do is... So your overlap needs to be no more than two and a half yes. inches at this point, yes. preferably just a little bit less. That's it. So, so say we've sewn down this corner, so we're doing again a corner to a corner like we did at the start. And what we're going to do is lay that flat, so it'll be like that, won't it? Yeah. <laughs> so that should end up being flat yeah. with like that. And then we'll be cutting off our corner and then we'll be carrying on sewing it down like this. That's all. So have we got that right? So you just need to, are you gonna draw a line? Yeah, let's draw a line, kind of ruler. It's a bit, it does fight against you. This it is the fiddliest bit. This is the yes. fiddliest bit because it the fights. Second pair of hand does help. Yeah, because <laughs> it, it fights against you. Yes. So we're sewing that corner to that corner, aren't we? Right. Or is it that? Yeah. That one to that. Yeah. One. Thank you, Heather. <laughs> well, if it's the wrong way, it'll we'll be one find of the It's live yes. TV. Live TV. What I like to do as well. Um, is pin it down as if you were sewing it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So I pin along that line just to be extra sure. So there's nothing worse than when you've gone wrong yeah. in the corner. I put a few pins in this. I had one yeah. here, one here. So I like to pin it along the line as if I've sewn it. And then... See, I think that's wrong. Have you got it wrong way around? That's wrong. Got it wrong way around. I think so, yeah. See, important. This is why you need it. to check. Yes, so it'll be. It's took me a few goes, this one. Yeah. So that right. were right, though, weren't it? Right sides right side together. together. Maybe drawn the, 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 draw the line the, other, the wrong way. Yeah, that's it. There you go. See, this is why you check. You've got to pin it. You've got to pin it. I'm sorry. I'm still in shot. I don't know if I'm still in shot. You won't? Yeah. Could I have another pin, please? I don't know where one's gone. Thank you. Let's try it away. Okay, we've found it. <laughs> so then, That's right. This will be there, there we go. There we go. So what we'll be doing is cutting off this corner so that it'll just be flat and we can sew along. So point out again which way the line needs to be drawn. So. Do it again, just to be on the safe again. side. Do it so, again, just to be on the safe side. So we're... This way, so again, we were right with our right sides, facing together, pulling it in a little bit. But I drew my line going that way. It's coming this way. Okay. So again, just practice this. Have a bit of a practice with it because it, it, it's quite...
quite confusing, isn't it? It can be quite confusing and it's easy to go wrong, but you need to, you always need to double check because even yeah. if you've done it a million times, yeah. it's so easy to pin it together wrong or draw the line on wrong. But this will give you your join on the bias like you did on the first piece so you don't get that bulky yes. seam. It's a nice, a nice lies, flat seam. It lies a lot flatter. There we go. Can I draw my line on again? And draw your line on again. Cute. Keeping it flat, if you as can. possible. Yeah. You obviously won't have two sets of hands. No. <laughs> so. so it is a little bit trickier. So where's my corner on that one? Thank you, Heather. Put a little mark where your corner is. I should have done that. See, you've got all the tips, you. Bear in mind, this is we're trying to keep in shot for a live yes. camera <laughs> as well. It does make it a little bit more difficult. Right. I've pretty okay. much got my line there. So then, what we're going to do again, as we did at the beginning, just sew along that line. Okay, so I'll just sew that. Have we got any comments or anything? Okay, rulers that size now out of stock. Oh, they are the long ones. They're the very popular um, then. Elaine just put two in as I'm surrounded by stock. <laughs> <laughs> she has, she's got, she's. We've had a big delivery of lots of accessories, scissors. Yeah. Um, all the little all bits and pieces, tools, so things will start appearing back in stock over the next day or two. Yeah. So there's a good chance we've got more than one. Yes. Yeah, there we go. Okay. I'll just check you're all in. All yep, in that we're all in frame. Yeah, good. So now can you see, if you pull it... Mine's a little bit baggy, so if you just pull it in that little bit, keeping it tight, it won't be baggy. Could we then maybe take that and, and just sew another sew line? In. Sew another yeah, line. Absolutely. And then that'll pull that in a bit. Might be easier this time because you haven't got, got your pins in. Because you haven't got pins in. <laughs> this is like I say when I'm doing the bag sewing. Go round once. If it's yeah. a bit of a wonky line, you can always go round again. again. It is. Make sure you're getting it right. So hopefully I think that should be alright. So we're there. Your line will be much straighter. Absolutely. Yeah, you've not got the camera pointing at you. No. No pressure. No pressure, <laughs> no. Right, so, there we go. So we should so we're going to cut. So we're going to cut that corner off now. Just as you did before. Yeah. I'll cut that cut line. Cut that line of stitching, yeah. There we go. Pull them stitches out, then we can press it flat and then yeah you want to press your seam again flat there we go i'm just going to do it finger press it yeah. this time oh, you certainly putting the iron on oh yeah oh yeah i wondered where i'd put that <laughs> it's there right in front of me so if you've got one of these these are a handy tool They're to really have good, if, yes. if that's all you're wanting to press it's yes. not worth putting your iron on Absolutely for that not, no. so then all we're going to do is just Finish off that line of stitching that we started here, just go all the way across to the place where we started. I hope you're getting some good tips off this. <laughs> And I've got a little bit of a snag in mind, but you, the more you practice, the better you, the better get. you get. And you won't be on the time frame. No. <laughs> Stitching time says thanks. That is how I do my binding sometimes. I slot the fabric into the binding if I'm just using it as decoration. That's when you fold it in half and just slide it in. Yes, yeah. I've done that before as yeah. well, yes. Okay, okay, so that is our binding sewn to our back. So then we're going to flip it over. And what I like to do is start to flip all your binding over the edge. This can be again a bit fiddly. Bring it round to the front. Bring it round to the front. Flip all your corners through. And if you need to cut any bulk out of your seams, you can. And what we're going to do is we're going to be placing 
are binding over the stitching. So if you have stitched, um, like I have before, we're going to place it over the stitching. So it's going to fold over like that. And over the stitch line that you've yes, just made. That's it, yeah. Over the stitch line on the back. So we're now on the front. front sorry. Yeah, front. so you want to take your binding just past that stitch line. And pin. This is to make sure that when you sew from the front, it will um, be on your binding at the yes. back. So I'm just going to pin and clip that all the way around. That's where my join was. Fold that over. Sorry, this may take a little bit of time. It's okay. Has anybody got any questions out there? I hope this is helpful. <laughs> hope you're enjoying it. <laughs> so when we come to a corner, like I've come to here, Want to make sure right we'll zoom in on this one yeah want to make sure that again we've got this bit flat and then what we're going to do it can be a bit tricky is we're just going to fold over that corner so that we're making again another fold on the front so a mitered corner i'll show you again we've got flat here and we're just going to fold it over like that so that we're making this fold, a nice neat corner. And then you, you want to pop a pin or a clip in that. So that it's holding the whole thing over like that. Okay. So then I'm just going to carry on going around all the way around. Helen says great tips, thank you. I think, like I say, it's the corners more than anything. I think that people, people struggle, struggle with. with. Yeah, because mm. at first it's hard to get your head round, isn't it? Once you've got it, you've got it then. Can I also say, when you're binding this way, mm. if you're doing it this way, you don't necessarily have to do... You know when you're folding it into the bias binding at the beginning? Yes, no, you don't. You can you just do. do it where you just fold the fabric in half, press yeah, it in press half. It. Yeah, um, and then if you're unsure about whether you'll see any ironed folds or anything, you don't have that. No. Um, so that's another way. I've, I'm telling you that because if you've watched any of my videos, you yeah. might see might see me doing it that way. There are different There's ways. ways. There's different ways to do it. There are definitely. Just flip that corner around that one there, like so. Pop that over. That corner's gone a bit astray. That one. It's a bit bulky. Yeah, a little bit bulky to get it over. Like I say, you can cut. Trim you. Yes, the bulkiness out of your corner. That one's a little bit bulky there. I might just trim that a little bit down, I think. Just to get a little bit of bulk out of that. Stitching time says, good to know, I'm doing it right. It's not necessarily a right way and a wrong way. No. Everybody has... Probably has their own ways of doing it. Um, and you find what's comfortable for you. There we go. That corner's a little bit weird. Need to trim it out the yeah, corner, really, don't you? There. Mm, doesn't want to go, that one, does it? Just try and keep it straight. Yeah. If you've got to trim your bulk out, <laughs> you need to keep it, try and keep it even. There we go. There we go. That better? Much better. Just takes that little bit of extra time, doesn't it? Yeah, well, it is something that's worth spending, taking your time doing. Practicing, absolutely. Do you want me to help? Yes, can you do that? It's still not working for me, that corner. And then lastly, we're just going to uh, stitch it to the back, to the front even. Keep saying to back. stitch it, yeah. Stitch to the front. We're going to stitch on the front, yeah. Yeah. See, corners even for me can be tricky. Right. But just keep having a practice at that. 
This one doesn't want to doesn't go. Want to this go one us. doesn't want to go. I think this side is rather it's, it's rather go. wide. Let me just trim this go. seam allowance down a bit. This side, this like side that. seems quite wide. Yeah, so just take that up. Yeah. Take the bit of that seam allowance off. Yeah. I'm not cutting through anything. I shouldn't. Oh uh, yeah. Go on. I'll hold that. Watch your fingers. You're all right. There is quite a lot of bulkiness there, isn't there? Yeah, let's try and not put my head in the show. <laughs> yeah, I've trimmed the corner. can work that one into place as you're sewing it. Yes, absolutely. I tend to do that when I come across them. I just sort of work it into place, like you say. Which way are you sewing? <laughs> Make sure the pins are right way around. Do you find you do yes, that? Yes, I do You get your pins the wrong time. way, you get your pins the wrong way around. Yeah. I've sewn over my pins. So just going past that stitch line that you've made from the back, as long as you make sure that when you fold, you pull it just over that little stitch line, you should get your stitching yeah. on the back. I don't know why that corner doesn't want to go, but it just doesn't want to go. This one's not going to be all right. Uh, stitching right elaine says will you use a longer stitch on top top stitching um you can do i know a lot of people do use longer stitches on top for top stitching if you're using a fancy um, thread or yes one of the variegated threads you and you want it to be seen more yeah you can do um i tend to stick to my same stitch length um maybe go up to about Three. Three and a half, yeah, maybe. And a half. It, it's personal choice. Yeah, it is. I like a longer length myself. There we go. Got there in the end. Right. Okay. Can't pin this up on the angle, I'll have to do it that way. Yeah. Okay. Right. So, that one you need to do. <laughs> that's the one you'll need to do as you get to it. I don't know why that's so bulky. I don't know what's happened there. Trying to get it. That's your funny corner. Let's snip them, stick them threads. Like I said, just keep practicing at this. The more you do, the better you get. And you'll have a really nice place now. You will. <laughs> pin that. That's why I do. I like to pin. Why is it when there's one bent I pin? One, you've got one bent pin. That's the one you always, always pick up. I know. I know. I'm the same at home. Is that under? Yeah, that's it. That's it. Are we, we under? Yeah, we're under. Fabulous. Right. So we're just past that line. Yeah. We've got to be past that line, just on or just past that line, otherwise you won't end up on your binding on the back. So again, that can be a little bit tricky, just getting it. Because that's the nice. thing, if you found out, you know, you do it and you think you always go off your binding. Yes. That's why you need to be past past that, that line. I will not be defeated. <laughs> Well, we're not going to get a perfectly straight corner on that one. We'll have to accept that one. one. Really it hard. is. Accept that one. <laughs> Sometimes there it we can't go. always go the way you want it to. Kind of right. Right. So, we're like this. We're all pinned Sam's up. keeping up. I'm glad you're all keeping Janet up. Janet says practice is always good. And Janet's a brilliant quilter. Yes. But you should do some fabulous quilts. Oh, brilliant. Do you use a, a longer stitch on top, Janet? Do you use a longer top stitch? Yes. Let us know. Yeah. <laughs> so we've got this now. So we're all pinned and clipped. So what we're going to do is take it to our sewing machine. And I just sort of start sort of anywhere along one of the edges. It doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter. matter too much, no. I think if you start at the bottom, what will be the bottom? If you've got a directional yes. print, start at the bottom because people tend to look more to the top. Yes. So if you start at the bottom. That's a good tip there. Mm. So what I like to do is I like to line my um, binding up with the edge of my foot and 
to try and make sure that we are going on the binding. So what I like to do is I do a few stitches, I go a bit along the way and then I have a look at the back to see if I'm um, in the right place. It's roughly an eighth of an inch yes. away from the inside edge. Yes. Or, yeah. So I always like to make sure I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, yep. I'm really in there. So I'm going to start. Don't want to go too far in. It looks neater no. if you can be a bit closer to the edge. And again, you sort of just adjust it yeah. as, you, as you come along it. Yeah, once you get a few behind, you've got a few behind you, then yeah. you can check. You can have a look. Come bit more, maybe a bit more. A bit more, yeah. <laughs> you can always adjust it as you go in. Be tucking that's it under it. so it lines up with that line. Yeah, that's it. Elaine says she loves the fabric. Yes, this is a, a Tilda. Tilda fabric. I love Tilda. <laughs> Yes, okay, so I can see that I am coming onto my binding there, so I'm at the right um, point, sort of point yep. with my foot. If not, you could stop now and unpick it. Yes, but yeah. Don't be that. afraid of your unpicker. No. We all need to use it. We need to use them enough. Absolutely. So then when we come to a corner, we just, I like to just sort of go over the corner a little bit, just to make it secure. Stop. Turn your foot and go back down the other way, making sure again that this line down here is going over that line of stitching. So I, I sort of like to pull it as I go, really. It's a bulky seam again. The corners just aren't working for me today. <laughs> <laughs> Filming. Bulky seam you made at the back. That's it, you need if you struggle, seat you need a bulky seam you made at the back. I think we've had them back in stock. Yeah, we have, haven't we? Mm. And just keep going round, basically. Until yeah, you get just keep back to the start keep again. checking you're over yeah, that stitch you're line. Because if you're not over that stitch line, oh, yeah. on or over that stitch line, you'll go off your binding on the back. Yes. Again, that's just practice. So I can, I've had a check of mine and I am on my... Do you know, it was like a revelation when I learned how to do this. Because <laughs> I, I tried a couple of times and I kept getting it wrong. and wasn't sure what I was doing wrong. And then when I just, when it, it just one day, the penny just dropped. It does, it does. And I got it and it's, because I don't like binding by hand. See, I do, I do like binding by hand. And if you want to get it done in a hurry, or you do in place, Matt, so you're yes. doing mug rugs. Like the mug rugs you can see there in front of you. That is a video, that is a tutorial in the VIP group. Those mug rugs you can see just in front. And all this, or at least uh, my version of it, I is is that. in that class as well. Absolutely. I keep forgetting, because I'm used to my needle being down, I lift my foot up. <laughs> Jane says, bulky seam thing. Another thing that I use and then can't find it because it flies off the back of the machine. <laughs> totally with you there. Yes. Yeah. It's one of those things I always lose. I think in the latest video I filmed, well, if you can find your bulky seam aid, yes. use that. If you use can't, yes. <laughs> use something else. Because <laughs> it's the one tool I'm always losing. Yeah. But it's really good to have. I always lose my thread snip, Chanel. Mm. That's something I always lose. I bought two pairs in the distance. Elaine's the same. Making sure you're on that. Yeah, the needles down. Flattening out. A really good tool to have with you now, actually. Um, I don't think I've brought, I've brought mine, but um, one of the finger. Oh yeah, I have that. Do you I want it? Oh, yes. Hang on, let me just put the camera back. I've actually got mine with me. So when you first start, it get you know it's a little bit tricky to find out where where to put the needle. Thank you very much. Where to put um, your fingers? Where to put your fingers? Can yeah. I just show this? If you don't know what a bulky oh, seam made is, there you go. That's a bulky seam made. I actually have it with me. Yeah. So this is a, a finger tool, and you just sort of it just helps you actually, rather than using your hands. Yeah, you're less like you're not you're not going to sew over your finger. Yeah. Because you do get nervous about where to put your put your hand sometimes. I do. You need yeah. to get close, but you don't want to sew over your finger. Yeah. <laughs> and it's a fantastic tool to have. Okay. 
just keep going round, making sure it's flat. Get into another corner now. Oh, there go the mug rugs. <laughs> oh, Elaine says, wow, that's good if you got them in stock. We have got loads of them in stock. They have just come back in stock. It is really useful. It's such a good tool. It is. Know. It's a lot sturdier than the purple fang. Yes. Which we've been using previously, but yes. this is so much better. It's so much sturdier. It's fabulous. Because you've got like um, a pokey tool uh, poking your holes through, which is good for things like your... If you're putting um, poppers in and you need to poke a hole through, that can be helpful for that, amongst other things. And then it's got a flat, the other one's a flat section, which is, tends to be the bit I use to push help push things out of the way. If you're bag making and you need to push a seam out of the way, it's brilliant for that. To While you're getting past things, sewing past things. Just keeps it flat, doesn't it? It does. Yes, Elaine, your, all your orders can be put in together. If you are going to put another order in, can you put in your in the message box, you know, the little notes box on your order, can you put that it's a second or a third order? Yes. Donna started asking. It makes it much easier for her if you can put that in, if you're putting in more than one order, and then she can put them together. Kerry says, well done, Chloe. The little things are always so fiddly to bind. I much yes. prefer doing a quilt. Thank yeah. you. Yes. I, I She's am, doing really well. I, I, I was a little bit nervous about this, I'm not going to lie. This so. is her first, obviously, the first live I, I so hope, along. Yes, I hope it's um, good for you, yeah. Um, I do do a lot more quilts than anything else. Anything, so I'm a bit better at binding my quilts. <laughs> Elaine says it'll be a third. Well, put, put that in the little notes, third order. Janet says you're doing a great job. Thank you. It Thank is you. new to us, this. It's quite good, though, doing a live, because we can answer your questions good. directly. I, I do. I'm enjoying it. Because normally you see us live just showing the fabrics and yes. um, talking on the material girls, which we'll be doing in about an hour. Yes, you will see us again. <laughs> there we go. So I'm nearly at the end now. I hope it's all turned out well. <laughs> I'd like to say I've got a bit of a um, a bit of a fold, but when you do yours, make sure when you're doing your binding, you're pulling it. Um, so it's a little bit tighter. tighter. That's where, I, yeah. Yeah. I find when I'm doing mine, um, I do need to do mine a little bit tighter. So if you had a two and a half inch gap, you could maybe just take it a couple of millimeters, a couple of an eighth of an inch yeah. under that, or something That's like that. It, yeah. So it pulls it flat. Right, so I'm just going to cut my threads. So we're just in the last bottom bit. <laughs> But I am on my binding all the way around. All right, so can I put this back? Of course you can. Excuse all the threads. <laughs> so again, it's just practice. The more you do, like I say, the better you get. I've got all these little threads I just need to cut off. But um, here we go. So obviously yours will look a bit... A bit neater. A bit neater. Because we're on a time schedule. But, yeah. Um, but that is basically how you do your binding. And there you go. You can see that all your, your stitching is on your binding. So it, it all depends how if you go, how far over you pull it. It's really quite close on the back. It's really good. Yeah. On the back, how far you pull it over. If you pull it too, if you don't pull it quite as far, then you won't get as big a, um, a flap. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's fab. She's done a really good job. Well done, Chloe. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I hope, I hope I've helped you with like, some corners and some yeah. tips like that. And, yeah. So, so doing things like this. Yes. Uh, with your binding. Um, anything, anything that's... If you use the double-sided bosel as well, yes. you're going to need to bind that. Yeah. So anyway, now we've done that. Does everybody manage that? Yes. We're going to do show you how to do continuous bias binding because we can't do a bias we can't do a binding tutorial without Absolutely. showing you how to Yes, do it on the bias. Actually cut it on the bias. This if you where it comes in with all the yeah. tips. If you were going to do a round mat or a mat that's got curved corners, you would need your binding to stretch. Yes. You don't need it on the square, anything yes. square, rectangular, doesn't need to stretch. Nope. So we'll just clear up a few things. Yes. You, but you need it like this. So it stretches, yes. so it'll bend round corners. So, out the way um, where's my blue tack quarter gone? I think it might have gone on the floor. I think <laughs> everything's got shoved off the other side of the <laughs> table. I hope your mats are going to look fabulous, by the way. Right, 
So. Oh, just click the iron on. Yeah. Now this is new to me as well. Yes, Chloe so. hasn't seen me do this. Okay. Let's get this. This is relatively new to me. Just move a few things out yeah. of the way. Let's have a look. Janet says, well done, as does Elaine. Thank you. Uh, both Elaine's. Great stuff, well done, says uh, Jane. Oh, thank uh, you. Janet says you're doing a great job. Can I move back to you, you just so I've got a bit Absolutely. more room? Thank you, everybody. You're all so kind. <laughs> So that was brilliant. That was brilliant. Because binding is one of the most difficult things difficult. for people it in is. the shop that people ask about all yes. the time. So are we, we're in the right I place. Think I think we're in the right place, place aren't yes, we? Yes, definitely. We can so see. we're going to make approximately three metres of um, binding, mm -hmm. depending on how wide you do it, out of a fat quarter. Yeah. All right. So this is one. I've made previously this is two and a half inch wide like you've just yes, made you, obviously yeah. you can make it any every look any <laughs> width that you want yeah. obviously the narrower it is the more you'll get yeah so two and a half gave us approximately three th approximately I think three meters i think yeah. so i could do to give that a bit of a press first yeah. so i'm going to try and do this relatively quick because we we are on a time scale because yeah. we have got the material girls in a while Oh, James is going to leave now. I put fabric on the cross for 20-odd years whilst making curtains. See you at 12. Yes. yes. See Thank you, you at 12. Watch. Thanks James for watching. 12. So I'm just going to give this a quick press. Make it easier. So does anybody know how to do this already? No, this is all does, has anybody you. struggled with it? This makes making your own binding. It what? just takes away having to do all yeah. the sewing, the, a lot of the pieces together. Yeah. And you can wind it, make loads. You could get into the habit. You could sit and just make a few in different colours, winding round bits of card. Yeah. And then you've got it there got all it ready. ready for when you need it. Yes. Can I just give you that to hold? Of course you can. Because otherwise it'll it spring on onto the floor. <laughs> so. Right. So we need, basically, to cut it from us. So you've got your fat quarter, but to do this, uh, this technique, you really need to be working from a square. From a square, really. So we can either fold up your fabric so you get point to point. I'm just doing it, lining it up with a cell edge there. And then you would cut off this piece and you would cut off this piece. Right. Um, but you could do that with also on the 45 degree line if you wanted to. If you were doing it on a bigger piece of fabric with a bigger square, um, you could line up your 45 degree angle yeah along the bottom edge of your fabric make sure your fabric's straight when yes. you start so if i go there so my 45 degree line can they see that um i need right. to come just move it down a little bit just come down a little yeah. bit move it back a bit yeah there is that right yeah, well it will right. be in a few seconds when we can just clock a look oh wait so i must sit on my hands on there. It, so probably i'll be back so there we go we've got a 45 degree line here yeah so if this was, a, I've not straightened that up, but you would make sure that was straight and we could go from the point, that's your 45 degree angle, and then you could draw a line yeah. straight up to the corner there. So but to make it easy, if you haven't got the ruler and you can't do that, you can make a square just by folding. I'm just going to line it up with the straight edge that's printed on the cell edge. Mm -hmm. All right. So then I'll need to cut off. Obviously, you can do it with scissors. Yeah. You can draw it on. I'm just going to cut off that edge. I'm not blocking the camera, am I? No, I think you're all right. Yeah. So I'm just going to cut those two edges off. So hopefully that's square. 45 now put me if i put my 45 degree line on that line there that should then be square okay so just give that line a press just so you can see i'll just do that yeah with that yeah it's only just so it's a cutting line yeah okay so that's your cutting line open this out okay so you can see you've got that 45 degree line yeah. 
down the middle and just sit out of the way. Now you can either cut that with your ruler or you can cut that with a pair of scissors. So I'm just going to put that on, try not to get in the way <laughs> of the shot. I'm sitting down to do this so I don't I've get never in sat down, of course. No, I'm just doing it sitting down so <laughs> yeah. I don't get in the way because I think I might be getting in the way of the camera a little bit. No. So right just, slide your, just slide your ruler up. Okay, so I'm right sides up here. Fabric's right side up. So you've got your two triangles. So then what you want to do is you want to take the bottom here mm -hmm. and flip it over and line it up with the top of this one. Oh. Bottom up to the top. Yeah. But... But. Remember, but, B-U-T-T, -T, <laughs> bottom yeah. up to the top. Yeah. Because that's the bit I always got confused with, yeah. which way to do it, right? So, yeah. so if it's right side up, your, your angles go in from uh, bottom right, top yeah. left, uh, bottom up to the top, so but. That should remind you. And then line it up at the top, and you will have an overhang on either side of approximately a quarter of an inch. Yeah. Approximately a quarter of an inch. So it might be slightly out today, because just for time's sake. And then we're just going to pin that and then stitch that seam at a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'll just put a couple of pins in and then Chloe can just stitch that for us. Absolutely. Oh, Claire says, just worked out how to join chat on YouTube. Love learning something new, so thanks for a very detailed tutorial. You're very welcome. <laughs> There we go. Right, so, so now we just need to stitch. So you will have your overhang at each end, which will be approximately a quarter of an inch, and then you stitch a quarter of an inch quarter seam allowance, please. Oh, just hold the eye. Yeah. <laughs> if ours is slightly out, it's because we haven't got a quarter inch foot on or a quarter inch mark. If you wanted to be precise, you could draw this seam allowance on and then you, you, your bias would be more precise. Now, do you want to yeah. just check we're in shot? Yeah. Yes, I think we are in shot. Right, so just give that seam, uh, press that open. You can either finger press it or use your magic seam wand. The iron's on, so we'll use that. Nearly there. Is anybody doing this with me? Um, Elaine's, Elizabeth sorry, says, I, I've been sewing professionally for 40 years, so I know most techniques, but it's just lovely to have to your watch. company. That's yeah. nice. Oh, that's lovely. Okay, right. So, once we've done that. Yeah. So, there we go. That's your seam. That's your seam. So, we're wrong side up here. So, that's your seam. Um... So I've got that facing up and down and I've got the top left, bottom right. Mm -hmm. And now with your ruler, whichever size ruler you've got, you're now going to draw on your, your binding strips. So just to make it quicker, I'm going to do two and a half, two and a half inch strips to make them wider for the video. You can do these whatever um, width that you want. So I'm using a marker pen so you can see it. You can use it. Don't use a disappearing marker with heat. No. Because when you iron it, it It'll will disappear. disappear. So you could use a regular pen for this really, because it's going to be on it's going to be on the edge yeah. of the fabric. So as long as it doesn't run, um I just use generally use a regular pen. Or a pencil. Yeah. Or something that'll just draw just, on really yeah. easy. So 
sorry if it's not completely lined up, I just don't want to get in the shot. Um, Josie says that's such a good simple way to get 45 degree just learn something new I've always used a ruler yeah well I started off doing it with a ruler and I thought I don't know why I'm doing that because you can just hold it into a square because your square is your 45 degree angle from point to point so I'm glad that helped <laughs> so this is not going to be perfect I'm afraid but it'll be near as damn it if you get the idea Now, my last piece won't be two and a half inch. See, because I've gone offline there a bit. Oh, that's messing with me all CD, that. <laughs> but it'll do for the video. Yeah. It'll do for the video. So, that last piece is, is probably is less than two and a half inch. Um, so, that piece I would cut off. I'm just yeah. going to cut that off. It wouldn't normally be quite that much, but I've gone off. So, the bit that you have left. Chances are you'll have like that amount. Yeah. There's the amount left. But whatever you've got left, you can cut that piece off because you don't need that. Now we're in the way. Oh, you're all right. I'll just move it. Okay, so we don't need that bit. Right, so we'll get a bit less out of this one. Right. Now this is this is where the magic happens, really. So turn it over. So your point's at the top and you've got your point at the bottom and bring this forward and bring your bottom one up. Can you see that all right? I think so. So you've got your point at the right and then the point at the left at this side. We can just roll this one down, it's right side up. Right, roll this one down and this one up. Okay, so That's now clever. when you're looking at it like that, it looks like all your lines and you automatically think that's yeah. where you're going to sew your seam, but yeah. you don't. You shift it. Oh. down one so pull this one out so this will stick out and you line them up so this one will now stick out right. on this side yeah. and this one will stick out down here so you've shifted shifted it along one yeah now just to make it a little bit easier as well you think you could put in it that your lines are perfectly straight yeah fold if you just roughly fold back a quarter of an inch on each side this will give you an idea to make sure that you've got it in the right place. Because they will be offset when you sew them together. So, let me just roughly do... You don't need, you could, you don't, you don't need to put pressed in as a permanent. You could, draw this, you could draw this, again, seam allowance on if it would make it easier for you. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to cut that little bit off there. Okay, so that when you fold that back and you hold your seam allowance together then, fold that back and this back there, then they should be in a complete line. When it's folded back, they'll yeah. be in a straight line. When you sew them together, when they're laid out, they will be slightly offset by a quarter of an inch. Yeah. That just helps you see that when they're folded down, they will be in a continuous line. If the when you folded that down, they're offset, then they're not quite lined up right in your seam. Yeah. All right, so once you've done that, just pick up your seam. So we've holded it together for the seam, and then we're just going to pin through. Everyone's loving this, by the way. Yeah, you, everyone, you're going to pin through here. So if, if you pin it at roughly a quarter of an inch through, now if this was accurate, yes. if I'd drawn this accurate, yeah. look at that. Oh, wow. It will come straight through yeah, the line the on the other side and you'll know you've got it in the right wow. place. Yeah. Because it will go straight through and you'll be on the pin. So if that's roughly a quarter of an inch down, you will go through the line or near as damn it on yeah. the other side. And you'll know you're lined up right then. So that one's lined up. Clever. And just pin it all the way along. You can sometimes, if you've used a dark pen, hold it up. And see, and you can see it, light. see through yeah. the light, through it as well, that you've got it in the right place. So 
We'll just pin that. This one won't be right, I don't think. One of them went a bit wide, but you never know. <laughs> you never know. You never know. That's about a quarter of an inch. So, see, we're just out on that, on that That's one. That's where my line went wonky. That totally yeah. messy. I have to have it lined up properly. <laughs> totally if we had more that. time, you yeah. would. So, there we go. So, through there. Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. Not too bad. Not brilliant, but not too bad. You'll have more time and you'll be able to spend drawing. Make sure when you draw your lines on, yeah. when you cut your square, it's accurate. And when you draw your lines on, if everything's accurate, you'll get nice, straight. Yes. By finding. So then, once that's all pinned now, Good. you can just sew that. Sew that at a quarter. Sew that at a quarter of an inch. Quarter of an inch. Okay. Okay. All the way. Yeah. All the way. They're both same, they're both same. yeah, <laughs> just roughly where that line is. Just go past that line a little bit, that first line. Start before that line. So that, that one, that line? That black line, yeah. yeah. Okay. So you do need an accurate quarter of an inch. Um, ours won't probably be accurate, but yours will. To press that, press that open. That seam open. Oh, that's pretty. Looks pretty good anyway. So we'll just give that one quick press. Quick press. Not hold it too long, and it won't melt them out. Okay. So that's obviously not an accurate quarter of an inch seam at once. But you get the idea. Yeah. So now, now you're in this position, right? You can see it all right there, can't you? I think so. Yeah. So you then. Start cutting. Make sure you're not cutting through the bottom leg. Just follow your line. Oh. Cut your line all the way around. So if I just keep going. Yeah. Janet says, um, especially when you have plenty of fabric left over from projects. Oh, definitely. Or if you make a lot of a lot of quilts. Yeah. We just need a lot of binding. You do. Oh, you just want binding your own colour. This is yeah. relatively quick. This is quick. Yes, yeah, matching up. The longest bit, this is the longest bit. Cutting out, cutting, cutting it, yeah. Cutting it round. You're just going round and round and round because it will be a continuous strip. That is so clever. I would never have thought to have done that. You know, so when you can't, obviously, if it's not accurate, look, you see yes. your lines off. Yeah. So your line will be accurate. Yeah. I have every faith. <laughs> so just keep going. And we'll, and we'll be finished on time as well. Yes, we will be finished on time. It'll be time to have a brew. Yes. Tidy up. And then you'll see us and again. And we'll be back <laughs> on Facebook. Yeah, for our usual Thursday live. So I'm nearly there. Sorry, I'm just going to rush this so you can see. Yeah, everyone's saying it's so clever. It is impressive. really, it is really clever. This, how it works. Yeah. And you haven't got all that sewing all your pieces. You know, if you don't need a huge lot of binding, or if yeah. you do need a lot of binding, you can have a lot less pieces that you have to join. Yeah. If you're going around a big king size quilt, you might yeah. only have to do a couple of joins, as opposed to a few. Yeah. Nearly there. <laughs> last bit, no pressure. So last bit. There we go. So there we go. And we've got our So binding. we've got all this binding from one fat quarter. That's amazing. Got all that. And it's all, all pre-joined. Obviously it won't have raggedy bits no. like that. <laughs> um there you go. It's on the base. So that's what we You can wind that round a card yes. and just put it aside until you need it later. Yeah, that's fabulous. So, I think that's, so I think that's great. I really like doing that. Yes. So I think uh, that's everything. I think that's one. everything. Jenna says you could do this and keep it for future projects. You can. You can. I say wind it round card. 
Definitely. If you've got lots, so if you've got scraps left over, I mean, you can do this with any size square. Yeah. So if you only need a piece of a really narrow binding, yeah. You know, your your smaller pieces of fabric, you can. Yeah. Um, you can do that. I think I did. I've made one of these before. This little yeah. tub, one of the tubs that these little tubs I made. I made them out of ten inch squares, charm oh, yeah. uh, layer cake squares, yeah. Yeah. and I used a ten inch layer cake square. To make some binding, not for this one, but to round a couple yeah. of others that I made. Yeah. I uh, put around the top of those because I only mm. needed a small it's amount, so you could use your layer cake uh, pieces yeah. as well. Absolutely. Uh, for making small amounts of binding. Very clever. So there you go. So, Jessica, thanks, ladies, girls. A great tutorial. Thank you. You're very welcome. Yes, so we hope you, you enjoyed that. Yes, I hope. Yeah. I oh, hope Deb's uh, mind is blown. <laughs> <laughs> so you need to practice that binding. You need to practice. Yes. Keep practicing, yeah. yeah, and we wanna wanna see you. Yeah. Your binding skills. <laughs> yeah, and I think on our next sew along, we're looking at doing like a zippered yes, pouch. Zippered we know you pouch. still all struggle with, with zips, zips. Yeah. and putting tabs on, making it a professional look. This yes. is just a little pencil case. Yeah. We're going to teach you how to do that. Absolutely. Okay, yeah. so date to follow. Yes. Okay. Keep your eye out. Yes. Well, thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you. See you in half an hour half or so. Yes. Bye. Bye. So. The buttons and the thing there. <laughs> so. That's it. Yeah, is it, is it all right? We're off. Are we? We're, we're off there.